here tonight. I appreciate each one of you being here tonight too. Uh, I could already, I could leave now and, and be full. It's been a good place to be already, and, and I know that the Lord ain't done with us here tonight, so let's just get in the rest of the service and follow his leadership and his spirit and do what he'd have us to do tonight. I stopped today studying and praying, and I know that everybody here has met somebody in their life that will tell you that uh, they can live just as close to the Lord at home as they can go into church. I've heard that, Vernon, for years and years and years. Yeah. They'd say, Preacher, I'm all right. My relationship with God is is just fine and dandy. But you never see him in God's house. Yeah. And Lord, just I, as I study this today, and I know we all know this, uh, the Lord let me think on that for just a little while. All those people uh, that's told me that. I've got a cousin today, good a man as you'll ever not meet in your life. Uh, honest man. And he'll tell you that. Uh, but he never darkens the door at the house of God. Uh, so tonight in the Bible, in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 10, very familiar scripture. I want to go to, starting at verse 19, and I want to read down just a few verses of scripture to about verse number 26, I guess. And pay close attention tonight to the reading of God's word. It <clears throat> said, so this is the covenant well, let me go down to the 19th. I was at the 16th. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke into love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, mm -hmm. but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. You can be seated. And I, I won't preach on tonight on verse number 25 for just a few minutes. Not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. In other words, what that means is encouraging. Encouraging one another. But how, notice how he said this. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. And I thought about, brother, and I preached it for years, and I know that uh, Vernon's taught it for years. Billy's taught, preached and taught it for years that uh, we're getting close to the coming of the Son of God. Uh, so what he's saying here, so much more as the day approaches there. Brother, we are to be on fire for God. We are to be, uh, uh, brother, at the house of God every single time that, that we can tonight. And I know uh, as we get into this, and I, I'm going to preach on tonight for just a little while uh, with the help of the Lord. Uh, and a lot of our people don't know this. They think that uh, this is some kind of a social gathering when we come to God's house. Uh, this is just some place that we go. This is something that, that we do on Sundays and on Wednesdays. But it goes so much deeper uh, than that tonight. It goes so much farther than that. And I, uh, so many people today, don't they don't think it's a sin uh, to lay out a church. I'm going to preach tonight with the help of the Lord on why uh, that it is a sin to lay out a church. And I know tonight, and notice what I said, to lay out a church. There's people, uh, there's times that I've not been able to make it to God's house. There's times uh, that you've not been able to make it. There's sickness that comes about. There's things that happen and we might not be able to go there. And that's a reason tonight that I'm talking about excuses and I'm talking about laying out and just not coming uh, to God's house and how important it is tonight. But I, I begin to think and study on this today and uh, why our people's in the shape they are, uh, why we've got so many that's in and out and but, uh, why they're not like they are, brother. And I tell you, they don't even realize uh, that what they're doing is wrong. They don't even realize uh, how important God's church is and how important it is to assemble together and not to forsake that as, and so much more as we get closer and closer uh, to 
of the coming of the Son of God. And I thought, Brother, first and foremost tonight, uh, when I stay, when I just lay out of church, and uh, I could very well be here, but I choose not to be there. Uh, brother, I broke this covenant right here. Yeah. Amen. I, I took covenant with this church uh, when I joined that, uh, uh, that I would be here every single time, uh, that I'm uh, possibly able to be here, uh, then I'll be here tonight. Uh, I'll tell you, it's better tonight to never uh, uh, make a vow than to make one and break one. Amen. Amen. Uh, and brother, I, I tell you, I, and there's been many times in my life uh, since I've been preaching even uh, that I wasn't able to make it to God's house. There's been sickness. Uh, there's been heart, uh, heartaches. And there's been different things like that uh, that's prevented me. And I tell you, God knows every uh, single reason tonight. But I always uh, want to be found faithful uh, to the Word of God and to the house of God. And to God's people today, and I tell you, uh, it, it's so important that we remember that. Uh, so important that we, and I like Brian did it not long ago in, in Sunday school. Uh, he read it as a superintendent. Uh, he read this whole covenant here to it. And I tell you, that means something to me, Brian. That, uh, when I stood before this church and I, I asked to join this church, that meant something uh, to me. And I realized at that point uh, that I was taking covenant with the church and that uh, this is where God wanted to work me and where God wanted me and my family to be. And, but I take that serious today. Uh, but we've got so many that here in the last little while especially that uh, they'll come in and they'll make that covenant. They'll uh, get right back out. It don't mean a thing in the world to people anymore. Uh, but uh, I still believe that when we make a vow, we are to keep it. Amen. Uh, so 27, 28 years ago, uh, me and my wife stood and we made vow. And they're just as important today as they was on that day. Amen. Amen. So why is it, preacher, a sin to lay out of church? And I know this is Paul. Uh, some people argue where this is Paul writing or somebody else, but I believe this is Paul writing and he's yeah. pointing to the Hebrews here and he's saying not forsaken the assembling together of ourselves. Brother, that's what we're doing here tonight. Uh, I've had people to tell me why well, it's just a Wednesday night, a Thursday night service. I, uh, that's a man-made service. That's a man-made day uh, to go and worship the Lord. I'm going to tell you, man uh, didn't make any day. Amen. Amen. God made them all. Amen. They're all God's day. But this this is the time that this church has decided to come together midweek and worship the Lord together and pray together. And but I'll tell you, I believe that Thursday night is just as important as Sunday night. I've seen people get saved on Thursday just as much as I have on, on Sunday morning tonight. So it's important tonight to be faithful to the house of God. Secondly, tonight as we get into this, when we lay out, we're not obeying God's word. And brother, I'll tell you, when we don't obey God's word, uh, these people try to put it, God help me, just a few minutes. Uh, uh, these people will try to stack big sins and little sins. Uh, this one done this and this one done that. Well, if I lay out every other Sunday, if I lay out all the time, I'm just as guilty as they are tonight. Amen. Uh, brother, he said not to have forsaken uh, the assembling together of yourself. I'm thankful, brother, tonight uh, that we've got some people here that loves the Lord and loves to be in God. And I truly believe that the group that's here tonight, I believe that uh, brother, when they can and it's possible they're here. And brother, when something comes up and they're not able to be here, they're home praying. I believe that with all my heart. But if we're able tonight, uh, we need to gather together. I thought about this right here. Today as I studied, I thought, brother, young families will get in church for just a little while. And then they'll go right back out. Then they'll come right back in. And they're developing a habit that's going to last for generations. Yeah. Our children see that. And brother, I'll tell you when I'm thankful of this. I'm not bragging on me. not bragging on my wife when I say this. But my children don't go like they are too. But I tell you, growing up, they were in church every time the doors was open. As before they got 18 years old, uh, every time the house of God was open, they were there. And they know that's where they're supposed to be. And you can ask them right now tonight, any one of them, where they're supposed to be at tonight. And they'll tell you at God's house. They're having church tonight. Uh, we're supposed to be in God's house. And I'm not making excuses for them or anything like that. Uh, but brother, that they know better because they've seen mom and dad every single service going to church. They know, uh, brother, where they're 
they're supposed to be tonight. So if I'm in and out and I'm in and out, my children are going to follow my footsteps. Yeah. Yeah. It's very important. And I've said this. Get your kids in under the sound of good teaching. Yeah. Get them in under the sound of good preaching and good gospel preaching and keep them there. Yeah. But not only that, be the moms and be the dads and the grandpas and grannies that they can see this Bible working in our lives. Yeah. I never will forget the story told is about my grandpa and my dad. And everybody, nobody here much know them. Maybe had met them a time or two. But everybody that knows my grandpa know that he was a good godly man. And my dad was on the end. But as just a little boy like Hunter, there's the snow coming. Grandpa was going to the barn to check on the cows or something. It, the snow was about six, eight inches deep already and he was going across through there. And he looked back and he told my dad, he said, son, keep up with me. He was a following. He said, daddy, I'm trying. He said, I'm trying to walk in your footsteps. He could see them prints in the snow and he was trying to get in each one of them uh, footsteps. So brother, we need to walk in a way that they can follow uh, right in our footsteps and they can see that faithfulness and they can see uh, that devotion and, and that passion in our life. Uh, brother, to be at God's house and I'll promise you uh, they may stray from it some time uh, uh, every once in a while. They may wonder a little bit but I'll promise you when that word is implanted and that example is set for them, there, uh, the Bible said to try up a child in the way it should go and when they get old they'll not depart from it they'll know where to get their help and they'll know where to get their strength so brother I'll tell you it's a dangerous thing to lay out a church in front of your kids and I'll tell you I've thought for three four weeks now and I've mentioned it several times a little girl talking to Brian saying pray that mom and daddy will bring me back to church Pray they'll bring me back to church. And the girl, not long ago when school started, she's praying that she'll be able to come back to church. I'll tell you, our children notice what's going on. They notice our, the good things we do. They notice the bad things they do uh, that we do. And brother, they're going to follow that. They're little sponges. So let's lead them the right way. Let's show them uh, the right way. I know every time we come down here uh, to God's house, we're not going to shout the house down. I know every time uh, that we gather, there's folks not going to be on this altar getting saved and getting right and getting close to God. I know that and I realize that. And we go through times like that. But brother, I'll tell you, when you show them uh, your faithfulness and you show them uh, your willingness, brother, to keep going anyway uh, through them dry spells and through that hard time. They're going to see that. Yes. Hey. It'll matter. It I preached not long ago on the generations of a church and how the, the first generation, they're on fire for God. Yeah. They're wanting to work. They're wanting to build. They're wanting to grow the church. And that, I'll tell you, when they go home and they're uh, they get home from work, they're eating supper, they're, that's what they're talking about, what they can do for the church, how, uh, what else can we start, what else can we do, uh, we've got to get people uh, to Jesus, we've got to get this church going, we've got to do it uh, for Jesus, there's a fire there, that second generation, that fire dwindles down a little. And the third generation is very rare anymore to have three generations of people in church. Yeah. And by that fourth generation, it's completely gone away with. And that's 90 95% of the time in churches. That's 95% of the time in business. That's in families. That's in everything you want to look at tonight. That's the very, but I tell you, if we'll remain faithful, it'll make a difference. It'll make a difference. So he said, not forsaken. The assembling together of ourselves. It's important, church. It's important to me tonight to be at God's house not only because of this covenant, not only because of these children. I'm going to tell you something, another thing on, on that. What would these children think if they come in here four or five services in a row and Preacher Rocky wasn't here? Or what would they think if I was here every other service? They wouldn't have much confidence in me, would they? And so it's important for me to be here because of this covenant, because of these children right here. And I'll tell you, this is where I get my strength. You all are encouragement to me. 
And I hope that I'm an encouragement to you. And I hope that each other, the fellowship uh, that we have one to another, hey, it's important that your relationship with the Lord is the most important thing on this earth. Brother, your, uh, your salvation and that personal relationship with Christ Jesus, uh, that's what it's all about. But to grow in His grace and to grow in His knowledge, brother, we have to have fellowship. Amen. One with another. I'll tell you, I've been through things myself in my life that might be a help to you. Vernon's been through things in his life that has been a help to me, that he's given me his experience. That fellowship, but if I wasn't ever here, I'd never know that. Right. Amen. I'll tell you, I thought many times about this and how important that fellowship is to me. And here's the thing. You miss today, you say, I don't feel like going tonight. I'm going to tell you, I didn't feel like coming tonight in this body. I guarantee you, Geraldine didn't feel like it in her body. I guarantee you, Billy didn't in his body. I guarantee you, Linda didn't in her body. But I tell you, if we do that and we say, I'm just going to go here tonight, one service ain't going to matter. One time staying out, it ain't going to matter. That next time's going to be a little easier. That next time is going to get easier. Then the next time is going to be even easier. And before you know it, it's harder and harder to get back to church. Amen. Yeah. You say, preacher, how do you know I've been there? I've been through that myself. Yeah. I'm telling you my experience tonight. And, and brother, I'll tell you, if we'll stay faithful though, uh, God will bless us. God will bless these children. I, I'll tell you, that's my heart's desire. Uh, there's not a day goes by that I don't pray for these little kids in here. And uh, that one day that they're going to come to that age that God's going to start speaking to their heart. And, and I truly believe that every kid that's in here tonight, uh, that God has got a special plan for them in their life. And God is going to use them. Amen. But if we don't keep them under the sound of the gospel, if we don't keep them in fellowship, I'm afraid to think what would happen. It's important tonight. It's important that we stay in fellowship. It's a dangerous thing when we start laying out of church. And so much more, as he said, as the day approaches, as you see the day approach. Yeah. How many tonight can say, I believe time's running out. I can. How many of us can, can look yeah. and see the society that we live in? See the sign of the times as the saying goes. See how things have went so far away from God but matching up so closely to this word. Yes. It's running out. Yeah. So we need to be faithful. We need to be faithful to church. We need to be faithful to the Lord. And I had somebody tell me that one time. I said, well, I'm faithful to the Lord. I'm just not faithful to church. I, God, Me and God's got something worked out. I've, had, I've heard it all, Billy. But I'm telling you, you ain't got it worked out with the Lord if you ain't going to church. Amen. Amen. You can't be right with God and not be right with your brother. It don't, it don't, you don't have it any other way. But I'll tell you, this scripture, and I don't know, he, he goes on, he said, if we sin willfully, and brother, if I lay out, and I'm talking about laying out, there's a difference in this and church and laying out of church. I hope we've got that so far. But he said, if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for our sins. Jesus ain't going to come back to this earth and die for our sins again. That's what he's saying. Or he's not coming back to die again. When he comes back the next time, he's taking us out of here. So let us not forsake the assembly together. Let's not teach our kids it's all right. Let's not teach them that it's all right to be double-minded. You know what Paul said a double-minded man was? He's unstable in all his ways. Amen. Amen. If, if I, I tell you, if I wasn't faithful, which I ain't been to work in three months, now, two months now, but I'm on medical leave, but I'll tell you, if I wasn't uh, faithful to it, they wouldn't have me around there long. Brian, if you just quit showing up, they're going to start wondering what's wrong. But we never do, do we? These folks that's been in and got out in the last six months, we need to pray for them. As we read back, exhorting one another, we need to be encouraging them. Call them, text them, knock on the door, something. 
invite them back. Let them know we love them. Let them know that God loves them. I'll tell you, I, I said this, and I'm going to try to close. <laughs> I said one time when I was out of the will of God, I said, I ain't lost a bit of faith in God, but I've lost it in man. And I'll tell you, putting it in man, you're wrong anyway. But when, if you truly got faith in the Lord, you'll be in God's house. And you'll be trying to grow your relationship with the Lord. That's, and I'll tell you, that's another thing. I can't grow it the way I need to sitting at the house. I can't grow it without fellowship with my brothers and sisters. I can't grow it without getting in His Word. And if you'll study His Word, and if you'll pray and you'll seek God's face, He'll tell us to come to the house, to the house of God. All those things go together tonight. So let's be faithful in all things. I, I said, I told the Lord in 1996 when I surrendered to the call of the preach. I ran from it for a little while. I couldn't run too far. I ran as far as I could. And I broke down on the bench that night while the preacher was preaching. And I said, Lord, if you'll give me a place to preach, I'll stand and preach. And he's always been faithful, really. I've not always been faithful to him, but he's always been faithful to me. And I'll tell you, I believe we need to be faithful to our call. We need to be faithful to our job, to what God's got us to do. But we've got to be faithful to church. And he'll, he'll bless us for it. And I'm going to close on this thought. Our children's lives, our children's future depends on it tonight. Let's everybody stand and get you some. Right? <clears throat>